Well, it's uh, a privilege to be in your classrooms today. Of course, we would have loved to have you here with us at Victoria Baptist Church, like previous year sixes have done, but we all know why that is not possible. But it's a great privilege to be with you, and we're going to try and take you through some of what Christians believe Easter is really all about. I am Eric, I'm a youth worker. And I'm Sandra, and I'm the children's worker. So welcome, and hopefully you enjoy uh, the next hour or so of this lesson. So you should all have been given one of these little booklets for you to look at through this lesson. And I'd like you just to turn to the first page and you'll find that there's a space at the bottom and you'll need that space in a moment because there's just a little start again for you to do. So what's going to happen is we're going to play you a film which has got lots of different images and on your piece of paper I'd like you to write down whether the images represent or symbolise Christmas, Easter or Harvest. You're not going to get much time, so you need to concentrate. So, get your pencil in your hand. You ready? Let's go. Should we try it one more time? But this time we're going to play it a bit faster. Ready? Go. So Eric, I just wanted to talk to you about a book I've been reading. All right, great. Love books. Uh, well, it's a brilliant book. I bought it because it's a children's book and I'm, I like to have little children's books around yep. for uh, Vicky B's and things like that and it's got some amazing pictures in it really beautiful colorful pictures all oh, right that's funny I've, I've just during lockdown also been reading a fantastic oh, book yeah yeah really good one has it got pictures in it uh photographs photographs yeah photographs okay, rather minor, than pictures yeah minor illustrations rather than photos. all right no fair enough but of course you know but uh yeah so this book it's a really nice book about the life of someone and it tells you all about when they were a child and I tell you the bits I really liked was he was quite a cheeky person, this person. Was he? Yeah. So he used to try and smuggle his dog into school. Never. I don't know how that would have gone down with the teachers. <laughs> and from when he was 12, he had a motorbike. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> and a motorbike. And he used to ride to school on his motorbike. At the age of 12? At the age of 12. And hide it in the grounds of the school. So that he could go and look at it at lunchtime because he loved it so much. No way. Yep, way. Wow. <laughs> my, my, mine is also about a, a chappy, a yeah. cheeky chappy, um, but he, he had to go into the war. So it's not, not as, mm. it doesn't sound as joyful as yours. No. I mean, he, he was great in the war. He really yeah. went through different uh, jobs in the war. Yeah. And, but it's, it's, it's quite a bit sad, really. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, this one's quite a happy book because it also talks about him meeting the love of his life. And getting married and having children and oh, grandchildren right. and all that sort well, of thing. Well, mine, mine has the same, yeah. except it was his second wife that he had children with. The oh. first wife he did not have children with and they separated. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, my book doesn't say anything about that sort of thing. Okay. It just says about this marriage. What's your book about then? Because it well, sounds it's quite a, it's interesting. It's about a famous guy who, who walked an awful lot. Tom. I don't Captain believe Tom. it. Captain Tom. What? Look. Never. Captain Tom Moore. Captain Tom Moore. Wow. How on earth can so, two story, two books be so different? About the same person. Well, I suppose if you think about it, the book that I've got is more um, geared towards children and quite young children, really. So it needs to be quite bright and colourful, lots of so. pictures and also quite positive rather than putting in all the negative stuff. I see yours is a bit thinner than mine as well. Yeah. So mine will have far more details. Yeah. 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 OK, that's yeah. fair enough. 
Oh, wow. Well, there you go. Two books about the same person. We are here to discuss four books yes. about the same person. And these four are the four first books of what we call the New Testament, yeah. a part of our Bibles. And uh, the books are Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And you might want to remember that for a little exercise later mm -hmm. on. Um, just very briefly, as we mentioned Captain Tom's book, these four are all about the person called Jesus. And at Easter, we remember Jesus dying and coming back to life again. Mm -hmm. And in Matthew, over a third of Matthew actually mentions Jesus' last few days on planet Earth. So it must be quite important. Yeah. A third of a book is dedicated to it. And then the book of John, well, almost 50%, almost half of all its pages Gosh, are dedicated. Lot, it? Yeah. So it must be important, yeah, like, yeah. don't you yeah. think? Uh, it's a bit like the difference between your book and my book. Mm. You know, if you want details, you just write more. And these guys all together wrote an awful lot, mm. obviously, about Jesus. So we're going to look at the number four, I think. And we're looking at four different um, accounts of the life of Jesus. So if you could turn to page four and five, which look like this in your little activity book. Right, Sandra, what do you see? I'm ready. What do you see on the left-hand top corner? I see a man who looks like he must be a king sitting on a throne and in front of him is a mat Yes. and that mat seems to have like a horseshoe or maybe it's maybe it's the letter U or something like that on it. Or the letter N upside down. Or the letter N upside However down. However you look at it. Yeah. Now if you think it's a letter U, let's go with that. Okay. And you think it's a mat. Yeah. If you say those two words very quickly, what would okay. you get? Matthew. 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 Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Matthew. Right. So now, that's the book that... Keep that in mind for the next that, few yeah. as well. Okay. So if you in your books uh, could write Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, if you could write that anywhere in that triangle we've created in your book, that would be fantastic. And also the word king. So Matthew focuses on Jesus being the king of people's lives. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, we've just had, well, just a few months ago, we had uh, Christmas. Yeah. And in Christmas, part of the Christmas story is the wise men, the kings, or the magi. Mm -hmm. People call them different things. So he would mention them because they were kings. Okay, in the other Gospels, you might not find them in the other books, but you will definitely find them. So uh, stories about Jesus, his kingdom. Matthew will have an awful lot of stories about the kingdom of heaven, which is where Jesus came from. Okay, so totally different look than some of the others have. Mm. So maybe you want to write down Matthew, and the word king and the word kingdom in that particular uh, area of your sheet okay second picture okay what do i see i see a boat yeah with a big m on it yeah and i see a bit like a butler or a servant yeah servant. um with some um, looks like an ant or something that he's giving to an anteater absolutely right yes yes, yes. yes. so when I, i'm actually looking at that boat again and thinking that looks a bit like the ark oh yeah you from, know noah's, yeah, ark. Yeah, noah's ark yeah, yeah. So, so, why would the M be on the R? Uh, I think I've got the idea of this now. I think that is Mark. Mark, indeed. M Mark. So, if you write down the word Mark in there, that would be great. So, that's the second book of the four that we're discussing. And as Sandra said, there is a butler or a servant. Mm. And Mark is all about Jesus being a servant. So, once again, in this time of Easter, Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Mm. That's the role of a servant. Mm. So that would be very likely be in that particular book. Ser being a servant also means he's into action. So a lot of Mark is also, whilst Jesus was doing this, whilst this was happening, it's kind of a go, go, go book. Mm. Really good book. Mm. If you want to read any gospel, start with that one really because it's a lot of action. So write that word in there. Action, servant, and the book is Mark. Now then, what do you make of the third one? A bit more tricky, I think. It is, because I, I, was, I was trying to look at that while you were talking, actually, and think about what, what name that might be. So I can see, it looks like he's a doctor. Yeah. And um, he's got a telescope in his hand, so he's, he's trying to see this person here with the number 10. Yeah. And there's like a crowd of people as well. Yeah. With 10s in their hand. What, what do 10s mean in sports? Perfect, perfect score. Perfect score, yeah, correct, yeah. correct. And you said you saw what looks like a doctor. Yeah. Seeing. Yeah. Another word for seeing. Look. Oh, 
Got it. Luke. 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 L U K E. Yeah. <laughs> the book of Luke. Well done. You got there eventually. I did eventually. And it took um, me a bit of time. the doctor is given away by the Red Cross, of course, yeah. on his uh, shoulder. So that's the book of Luke. L U K E. Oh, um, Luke was a doctor, wasn't he? He was a doctor. Ah. So he would write in great detail. Yes, yeah. And probably his scribbles nobody could read. Exactly. Because doctors are not that <laughs> clear in writing. Um, so he would be, so write down Luke that's the book of Luke and perfect Luke would talk about the perfect man mm. Jesus being God but also fully human mm. the perfect man and of course he would write in great details because doctors have to deal with details mm. I've got a headache well that could be many many things mm. narrow it down narrow it down narrow it down until you get to the details so maybe the word details you might want to write in there as well so Luke perfect man and then details because that's what Luke he's looking at the perfect man mm. Jesus one left of the four okay so I can see a J correct with a switch on his side yeah and he's painting a picture of the Sun and he's written the word God yeah the Sun in the middle is the O of God yeah so I'm um, let me have a guess at this one the switch is on so J on John John well done what, what would he? How would he describe Jesus? I think he would describe Jesus as the Son of God. The Son of God, oh. indeed, not as U N S O N S O N, Son of yeah. God. So, if yeah. you could write that in your books, page five, uh, John, he's the writer of that book, and he looks at it as the Son of God. Now, John is quite, although he's got a lot to write. Like I said, over half of his book mm. about the last week of Jesus, um, he writes it in a language that's sometimes a bit hard to understand. So he doesn't have any of Jesus' birth in there. Mm. He goes, in the beginning was the Word, and the yeah. Word was with God, that sort of thing. Not of quite hard to understand, but if you put all these four together, you've got an amazing picture with loads of details from all four of them. So a bit like us, you know, Jesus had many different facets to his Absolutely. life. Absolutely. You know, I'm a, I was a teacher, I'm a, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, yeah, yeah, and yeah. all those sorts of things. Great and colleague. A colleague. <laughs> Um, all those different parts make make me up as a yes, whole person correct. and so these other people were writing about Jesus and if you put it all together you yeah. find out what sort of a person Jesus was yeah very much like our introduction on, the, yeah. uh, on Tom yeah the book of yeah. Tom you know you did yeah. it it was written for the children's market and mine was mm. written for the adult yeah. market so there you go four Gospels what look like four totally different stories about one person and yet they're all true stories so there you have it the four Gospels you talked about these Gospels and how much, how, what percentage of them they give over to the last yes. seven days of yeah. Jesus' life. And those last seven days are really what we're going to concentrate on. We are, um, yes. This morning, or this afternoon, whatever time you're watching this. And those seven days for the disciples were, were a real roller coaster of emotions. There were days when they were excited, yeah. days when they were sad, days when they felt bereft. It must have been. It must have been, you know, quite, a, quite an, an emotional time for them. So let's find out the story for ourselves by looking at some pictures. So we're okay. going to see some pictures come up on the screen and we'll talk you through the events of that last week of Jesus' life. So here's the first one. And this is, um, I think, one of the famous parts of the Easter story. Jesus riding into Jerusalem mm -hmm. on a donkey. Mm. People of Israel have been waiting for years and years and years for somebody to come and rescue them because they were occupied by the Romans at the time. And they thought he is going to be our king. So they did everything possible. Like he, they pretended almost that he was their king already. Mm -hmm. They put their cloaks, their coats on the road, and palm leaves, and started shouting Hosanna and praise him. And yeah, so that that was a great day. And we know that, of course, today still as Palm Sunday, which um, is round about now. Mm. Picture two shows us Jesus and his friends celebrating a meal called Passover, and that was a really special meal for Jewish people because it commemorates the time when they were led out of Egypt by God. And that's a meal you might have actually learnt about in your RE curriculum at school mm. has different elements that symbolise the different things, the events that happened around that time. So it's a really important meal. And that takes place on a day called Maundy Thursday, which in, in our church we still celebrate by taking communion yeah. to represent that meal. So that's something that we still do today. You might have spotted in the picture as well a bit of a shifty character. And that was Judas who was going to betray Jesus. Um, so that picture three, 
after the meal, they went to a place where Jesus says, I, I really need to pray because he knew what was going to happen. Not the details, but he knew what was about to happen. And he says, I need to pray to my father. So they went to this place uh, called the Garden of Gethsemane. And whilst they were there, they were praying. And uh, Jesus kind of was let down by his friends because mm -hmm. he was praying. And he said to his friends, can you pray with me? Now, if I promise to support you, then you expect me to support you. So all the friends said, yes, well, yeah, 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 we'll pray. And when Jesus said amen after the end of his prayer, his friends were all asleep. Mm, it's a yeah, quite so sad part of the story. Yeah, it is quite sad. But that was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. And of course, our next slide shows something even sadder, really, mm. because it was the slide that shows how Jesus was put to death. Now, Jesus hadn't really done anything wrong. We know that now. But at the time, they just wanted an excuse to get rid of him. And so people made things up about him. And the person that was in charge of putting him to death was not happy about this. He, he knew deep down in his heart that he didn't really have anything against Jesus, that he wasn't, he wasn't really meant to put him to death. And so actually what he did was something very significant. He sentenced him to death, but then he asked somebody to bring him a bowl of water and a towel. And he washed his hands as a symbol of washing his hands of the action that he had taken because he knew he felt guilty about the fact yeah. that he had decided that Jesus needed to be put to death and then Jesus was nailed to a cross and he died which of course was a time of great emotion for Jesus's friends and his family they were just distraught because they thought that Jesus had come to save them and they thought well how is he going to save us if he's if he's been put to death on a cross yeah. and something really amazing happened when Jesus died the whole of the land went black for three hours, even though it was the middle of the day. That is incredible, isn't I know. it? Yeah. yeah, sad and incredible all at the same time, mixed emotions. Mm. And uh, our final, one of our final pictures is when Jesus died, of course, they didn't just leave him there hanging. They put him uh, in a tomb and they put a big, big stone across it so that nobody could ever take the body away mm. just in case. Um, and they put that in front of them. And in a sense, that was the end of Jesus' life. So although that is over 50% in John's book, it is quite a sad story. It so is, yeah. quite, quite a, a, a sad part yeah. of the whole thing. And that, that's on Good Friday, isn't it? That's on Good Friday, yes. Yeah. That um, dying on the cross mm. and being put mm. in the tomb is all on Good Friday, indeed. indeed. And we finally come to picture six, which is another picture of the tomb, but there's a slight difference this time. But it's actually a very big difference. So if you notice, there is no stone in front of the tomb. And what happened was, three days after Jesus was buried, some of the women that used to go around with Jesus and his disciples came to the tomb and they wanted to put oils and spices on the body because that was the sort of thing they used to do in those days. But when they got there, they found that the, the stone had been rolled away. They went into the tomb to look for the body and it was no longer there. And that is the main part of our Easter story, of course. Exactly. But the question is, how do we know it's true? We need some evidence, Eric. That's what we need. I think we've got something for that, don't okay. you? Okay. Right, let's, let's do, do it. it. How do we know this is true? Uh, to find out whether something is true, you need to follow some clues. You need to kind of do some investigation. So let's do that together, shall we? Go to page six in your little booklets and you'll find uh, four um, areas to write down some answers to some clues that we might find. So I would like clue number one. But where's clue number one? Tell you what, here's clue number one. What could that be? And I think my colleague already alluded to that. When the ladies went into the tomb, there was a missing body. Now that could mean a few things. It could mean Jesus actually did die. But then surely loads of people would still have believed in him, would have produced him and say, actually he is here. So they would have physically, and they couldn't, they couldn't say he's here, not yet. Or maybe, maybe, the Romans stole the body. They had so much hassle with this guy who pretended to be a king, or people pretended that he was their king, that they say, you know what? We don't want any, uh, any people coming to visit this place, so we're going to steal the body. Now, if the rumours then started that he was back, back to life again, because that was the rumour, then all they had to do is say, no, actually, 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 here's a body. So, and they couldn't, because there was a missing body. Maybe the local authorities stole it. Or maybe the disciples stole it. They said they loved him so much that they say, you know what, 
we're going to pretend he's alive and uh, therefore we're going to steal the body and say oh he's alive he's alive we have seen him but then of course you need to know the rest of the story of the disciples some of them died before because of their faith in this Jesus now if that was me and I was going to be uh, tortured for something that I believed and they said well that's because you say he's alive and he wasn't I would just say hang on hang on I'll go and get the body and I, I would produce the body but they couldn't because as we say clue number one there is a missing body find out more so that was clue number one let's see what clue number two has for us what have I got in my egg the disciples changed so we talked earlier about how difficult that week was for the disciples and the hardest part came for them when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. They were so frightened that they all ran away. And in fact, after he was killed, they all hid because they thought they might be in for the same fate as Jesus. They hid away. They didn't want anyone to find them. But you know what? Just a few weeks later, they were back out on the streets talking about Jesus and how amazing he is and how he was the son of God. Now, why would they do that? because they'd seen him, they'd actually seen him. Why would they risk their lives for somebody who had died? No, they were quite willing to go out and talk about Jesus because they knew that he had done the impossible. He'd risen from the dead. So that was clue number two. Let's see what clue number three has. Here comes clue number three. Clue number three, what can that be? Well, let's find out, shall we? It says on here, 500 plus witnesses. Over 500 people spotted Jesus, all in different areas, not in one big area. That would have been a bit coincidental, but actually they found him all over Israel, in different places, by the beach, in the countryside, and all sorts of other places too. And it's a bit like in your playground. If something happens and you go and tell your teacher, your teacher might say, well, that's just your word, isn't it? But if you say, actually, two of my best friends saw it too, then, well, they're your best friends, aren't they? Yeah, but the rest of the class saw it. Wow, suddenly you've got more witnesses. Actually, some of the other classes saw it as well. And suddenly your words become way more powerful and believable because of the crowd of witnesses. So it's very important to know that that's a great clue that actually over 500 people in a very short space of time saw Jesus back alive. So that's another great clue. That was clue number three. Let's see clue number four. So that was clue number three. We've got one more clue to look at. People still change today. So when we got clue number two, we talked about how the disciples changed. They changed from cowardly, frightened people to brave, strong people who wanted to spread the message about Jesus. And people still change today when they hear about Jesus. I've met many, many people in my time as a Christian who have told me their testimony, and their testimony is always about how they lived it a certain way before they knew about Jesus, and then afterwards they lived in a different way. They may have become more kind, more loving, more accepting of other people. They may have changed their lives really dramatically. They may have been um, prone to stealing or anger. And they've given their life to Jesus and they've asked God to help them to change their lives. And it's happened. And I reckon if you asked a Christian, if you know a Christian and you ask them, how their lives have changed since they knew Jesus, they would be able to tell you exactly how it's changed. And it's always changed them for the better. So people's lives are still completely changed by Jesus' death and resurrection. And that is the reason why we still celebrate Easter today. So we've seen four different clues. There's an awful lot of evidence to weigh up and think about. We've thought about the different stories in the Bible, We've looked at the different clues about how people behaved, how people changed. And that evidence is there, and it's there to, for you to reflect on and think about. The decision about whether you believe it or not is totally up to you. So there we have it. As Sandra says, the decision is totally up to you, the individual. 
Um, it could be just a book that you read, like we did with Captain Tom, yeah. and uh, you will find a version that fits you and your style best. There are many, many versions out there of uh, Bible books, of children's books, youth Bibles. Uh, read it for yourself. Uh, come, come up with your own conclusion. We can just present this to you, and hopefully it helps you in understanding what Christians believe about the Easter stories. Now, I would like to finish with um, a little poem that somebody wrote. I didn't write this. And um, I need your help with this, okay? So in your classroom, if you go to page number seven in your little booklets, you can see in the grey box, the big in bold, Jesus is risen. I would like you to say that. But what we're going to do is we're going to start softly and then I'm going to get louder and louder. So as I go louder, your reply, Jesus is risen, gets louder as well. Okay. So, okay, here we go. What is that you say? Jesus is risen. But he was dead. Jesus is risen. No, no, he was nailed to a cross. Jesus is risen. And then he was laid in a grave. Jesus is risen. But he was dead for three days. Jesus is risen. No, now he's alive. Jesus is risen. But that means death has been defeated. Jesus is risen. And that means there's hope for us all. Jesus is risen. Well, let's shout it with one voice. Jesus, Jesus is, is risen. risen. I think I heard them. Did I you? definitely did. Yeah. All the way from Auckland yeah. to Victoria. <laughs> well done. And that's just the message of Easter, really, that Jesus is risen. It's that that changed the disciples. It's that that changes people today, as Sandra mm. mentioned earlier. That just leaves us the final page. Sandra, can you show you yours? Your page looks like this. Yes, that's blank. <laughs> Hopefully, by the end of the lesson, it might look like this or in your other lesson. Um, this is really about art. Um, you've got your four areas. You could decorate that with Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, for example. Um, but the idea is that you write your name in the little square in the middle and then you decorate it any which way you would like. And of course, we would love to see some of the uh, end results. So if your teacher could uh, be so kind to kind of send us some photos or get us some of the photocopies, that would be absolutely mm. brilliant. But it's been a great pleasure being with you. It definitely has. It's a shame we couldn't see you in person. Absolutely. But we hope that this has helped you to understand a little bit more about the festival that is Easter and why Christians celebrate it. So all that's left to say is, Happy, Happy Easter! Easter. Jesus is risen. And oh, they, I heard them. Uh, good point. <laughs> Let's do it again. Do it again. Oh, <laughs> yes. Well, the wild sport. Well, done. so. Am I going into the uh, palms on the uh, into the percentages? Special elements that remind them of the different events of that time. So that day is. That's not Good Friday, is it? I'd love to do that one again. Start again. Okay. So picture two shows us Jesus and his friends having a special meal. That meal was called Passover, and it was a special meal that the Jewish people had every year to celebrate the time that they were t um, taken out of um, Israel by God. Out of Egypt. Now that meal is a meal that Jewish people celebrate. <laughs> you knew you were going. You knew you were going to say Israel. That is hilarious. Right. Okay. This is the final time. Okay. Take I haven't been. 66. I haven't been very well. Yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm still poorly. Play, play that one. Had it been stolen? Had he come back to life, just as it had been uh, prophesied in the Bible? You didn't want points. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just leave it with you. You're just going to bridge most this I time. I know. <laughs> <laughs>